original series follows one Violet Evergarden, a former child soldier who, following the end of a war, contemplates the last words ever spoken to her by her commanding officer, I love you. To understand the meaning of this final message, Violet goes on to become an auto memories doll. No, not that kind of doll. These people write letters for those who are not able to write, whether it be a literacy problem, like they don't know how to write, or for medical reasons. However, being a soldier for most of her life, Violet finds it difficult at times to grasp the concept of emotion and feelings. But as the series progresses, she eventually finds the capacity to touch the hearts of her clients through her writing, and even comes to find out what those last words to her really meant. This was a beautiful show with so much to offer for its audience. And if you're curious to know what all that was, stick around and find out. There's a lot about this show that I believe makes it a KyoAni classic. And even though it wasn't entirely flawless, the good elements to it far outweigh the bad. Overall, I give Violet Evergarden a 90. Restating what I said earlier, this show was beautiful. Any more ways than one. If you were to ask me in one word what I thought of Violet Evergarden, again, that word would be beautiful. Why? Because everything about it is just beautiful. The character design and background, for one, are just gorgeous to look at. But then again, with this being a Kill Annie show, I wouldn't expect any less. The character design is very trademark modern Kill Annie, but the way that the characters are colored makes them stand out and just makes them look so vivid and vibrant. The backgrounds, too, are some of the most gorgeous that I've ever seen in anime. Again, a lot of that comes from the colors used, but a lot of how this world is presented almost makes it feel kind of homey and relaxing, like you're being taken to a countryside. And living in the Deep South, I can verify that even in Mississippi, we have such glorious views. Not that one, though. The story is also very touching and beautiful. It's a girl who's been a soldier for most of her life trying to understand what I love you means. Yeah, that's pretty much the plot. But at its core, though, you could very well make the argument that its very concept revolves around learning what it means to live. Which, if you've watched this show, she does, in fact, figure that out. But watching someone like Violet figure that out brings in this emotional element that we sometimes take for granted. What does it mean to live? What does it mean to love? Watching Violet tackle these and other questions gets you really invested, almost to the point where you're wrapped up in her journey and figuring out these questions yourself. Almost to the point where you just start to fall with even the simplest mention of the title. <laughs> and finally, the show touches.
touches on some pretty serious themes. Among the more obvious of them is dealing with trauma and grief. For some people in the show, it's trauma, while others, it's dealing with grief and loss. Violet experiences both. Given that she is, in fact, a child soldier, war has pretty much taken up most of her life. But once her part in this war that's going on is over, she basically has no way of knowing how to move on from that. All she's ever known is the military. It's a bit of an indirect way of experiencing trauma and, well, just experiencing war. But Violet's unique situation is an example of how war affects people. And along with that, she also experiences grief, especially when she learns the fate of her commanding officer, which leads to some of the show's most dramatic and tear-jerking moments. Overall, a lot is going on in this show that's done right, and it really does feel like a masterpiece in regards to its visual and emotional takeaways. And speaking of Violet, this leads to what I thought was the show's strongest point, its character development, especially when it came to Violet. It's clear throughout the series that people are truly touched by her. Even given her job as an auto memories doll, again, not that kind of doll. There's something special that happens when Violet writes a letter for someone. Somehow, with every client that Violet has, most of them anyways, she somehow manages to touch them in such a way that is so deep and personal that it just moves people. In fact, Violet herself sometimes becomes so invested in these certain situations. Most of that does, in fact, come from Violet herself, not because she has experienced all the things that her clients have gone through, but because she hasn't. As I mentioned earlier, Violet is a former child soldier, a product of war that never really had a happy life that many people get to experience. In fact, you could almost go as far to say as she's a feral child, and her backstory could very well prove that true. So, a lot of what she comes across is new to her, even when she becomes a full-fledged doll, don't make me come over there. There's so many new emotions and experiences that are foreign to her because she herself is still learning about these emotions and experiences. Again, it gets to a point where you almost start to ask questions yourself about a lot of basic thoughts and feelings that you often took for granted or just overlooked. And before I forget, while we're still on the subject of Violet, she was also a very relatable character. Pardon me while I open the autism door once again. While I think anyone in the military could relate to Violet in her struggles to adjusting to civilian life, I have to admit that she almost displayed some autistic traits that I could relate to. The chief of those being her inability to interpret emotions. As many of you know who have at least followed my Autism Acceptance Month event back in April, I actually have Asperger's Syndrome, which is an autism spectrum disorder that ranks very mild on the autism spectrum. Nonetheless, whether or not I'm high or low functioning, one of the symptoms of autism that I tend to experience is being unable to read social cues and body language, and to some extent, not being able to read emotional expressions. Though it's not as bad as you would think, or at least not as bad as I seem to make it out to be. Violet suffers from this problem very early on in the series, almost to a point where it tarnishes her chances at being a doll. Ugh. Still, she does manage to overcome this by at least what I could interpret, listening to what is being said rather than writing down what she hears. Realistically, anything related to communication will always be difficult to manage for someone on the spectrum, but Violet does show that there is a way to deal with the problem. 
I know Violet isn't autistic, but if the show can relate to somebody who is in this regard, then it goes to show just how great a character she is. Need I say more? Well, okay, I can say more, but at least at this point, not about the good ailments. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, but we gotta do it. It's, it's my job here on this channel, I gotta do it. And I know what you're thinking too. What could have possibly been wrong with this show? More than you think, but in the grand scheme of this entire review, it's just nitpicking. First among these problems was this kind of cool but also distracting effect in the show that I thought wasn't really necessary. Occasionally during a time skip, you'd get this scene that will show a landscape background, but then it does a fast forwarded time lapse that leads into the next scene. There wasn't anything necessarily wrong with this, and as I said, I thought it was kind of neat. But I also felt like it was really distracting, like it almost didn't fit the show at all. There's already so much visual eye candy here, why not just put a scenic background of the time of events we break from and then come back to the scene at the time of day it returns to? Again, I didn't have a problem with this, or at least not a big one. I just thought these cutaways could have been more subtle. Or at least less fast forward deep. That's not a real word. Another problem that I had also involved Violet's development into a working auto memories doll. I need to stop letting my dolls do the editing. I felt like her transition from a doll just starting out to one who gets called by major clients like royalty was kind of blunt. It almost felt like it happened overnight. Like one day she's this beginner and then they go blah, 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 and she's a master doll but not before we see Agar wearing a dress. The only issue that I took with this is that this transition is just, it's so abrupt. But to give the show some credit, I assume it takes place over at least two years. So it's likely by at least episode five, she's already gotten some valuable experience under her belt. And then there's the biggest issue, or not so big, but nitpicky issue, the finale. The series finale itself is not bad by any means. In fact, it does exactly what it should do and tie all the ends involving character arcs and conflicts up. And even touches base with Violet finding the meaning of her major's last words. My issue with the finale actually pertains to another episode. And that was episode 9. Here, Violet deals with the inevitable truth that her major may never come back. After grieving over her loss, we get several shots of the people she's written letters for and how they've been impacted by them. In fact, the way this episode was set up, this could have very well been the finale. Which is why the actual finale was a problem. Again, this was more of a nitpicky problem than an actual problem, but in watching episode 9, I couldn't help but feel like this episode was setting up an ending that was way too good to be true. I really would have liked it if this and its predecessing arc served as the finale instead of a few more clients and a whole arc about a peace treaty signing sandwiched in between. In fact, I would have loved to have seen the two endings switched. That is, have the arc about Violet grieving over her lost major be the finale and have the previous arc on the peace treaty come before it. It could have played out to where during the signing she finds out the truth and the last two or three episodes could be spent on her coming to terms with it. 
And it wouldn't require taking out the other three episodes, considering that the last episode before the Peace Treaty arc would still be able to lead into that arc perfectly. But again, this was very much a nitpick, and what we actually got for the finale wasn't that bad. As I said, it does exactly what it needs to do to end the series. I guess the creators wanted to add some kind of drama or action to liven things up and take a break from the episodic pattern it had from the beginning. Regardless, I thought the finale could have ended on a much stronger note and a more emotional one at that, but at the end of the day, it was fine. Though really, that's kind of been my whole view on this show. There are in fact a few problems that I had with it, but at the end of the day, it was still really, really good. So good that you almost don't even notice these problems. In fact, this show is so good, it should have won Crunchyroll's Anime of the Year for 2018. But it didn't. Why? Because there was no gore, or violence, or drugs, or sex, or a cute animation style that was way too detailed in some parts or not enough in others, or a dark nihilistic story that's been done countless times in other anime shows before it, and an overrated subplot about God being the world's biggest butthole. And of course, let's not forget, there's no big babies. How? I say how could Violet Evergarden, with its silly themes on trauma and loss and grief, the effects of war, and the true meaning of how to live, compare to such mature themes, especially when it comes to the big boobies. And let's not forget the masterful directing of a man whose work nine times out of ten gets swept under the rug for hardcore otakus with nothing better to do with their lives to find. Yes, I say to you, Violet Evergarden, you have much to learn when it comes to this splendid masterpiece that so many people are talking about it. Okay, fine. I'm the only one who's talking about it at this point after so long. Get over it. But no, seriously, Violet Evergarden was in fact the best anime of 2018, regardless of what some major online streaming service says. So, you'd be very foolish not to watch it. today's video and Kill Annie Month. As always, thank you so much for watching and if my earlier rant was not an indication, I think you can guess what my next video is going to be on. Isn't it exciting? Pray for me, please. Till next time, bye.